Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Willie, W-I-L-L-I-E, J-R-J dot R dot Fleming, F-L-E-M-I-N-G. The J-R stands for just righteousness. As you will see today, this was a righteous act. Yeah. We at the Chicago yeah. Anti-Eviction Campaign have reclaimed, repaired this foreclosed vacant property. Yeah. Yeah. Too often across America, we have watched vacant properties, abandoned properties, foreclosed on by the banks, come out of the hands of homeowners, and end up in bad conditions, yes, only to attract the wrong elements in our community. Because of the government inability to provide an answer to the homelessness crisis that is, uh, is plaguing our country, because of the bank unwillingness to help homeowners, we have took it upon ourselves as men, women of our communities to take back control of our community. Yeah. We, have, we have donated our own time, monies, and resources to do what almost every American should be doing, is taking control of their communities fixing up these vacant, abandoned properties yeah. and pe putting people in them who deserve to be in them. There is no excuse why we have peopleless housing and homeless people that we have not made the connection. So at the anti-eviction campaign, we decided to play the matchmakers yeah. and put homeless people yeah. into peopleless housing. <laughs> we like to give a thanks to the utility company that worked with us to get this done. Yeah. We have, like to give thanks to uh, Martha, who's going to be moving in, for actually working on the property. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to give thanks to um, the, the Taz family, who went through a foreclosure and have actually helped fight off their foreclosure and donated their time and resources to putting this house back to a state where it's habitable and livable. Yeah. If you look up and down this street, you'll see a lot of vacant and foreclosed property, abandoned property. The city do not have an answer. The banks do not have an answer. We figured out the answer. It's going to take us, the people, to provide the solutions that are plaguing our community and addressing the issues of homelessness. With no further ado, I'd like to introduce y'all to Pat Hill. Yeah! It's a great day, isn't it? Yes, it is. In Chicago and all over the world. My name is Pat Hill, and I'm representing today uh, IPAD Chicago, which is the International Year for People of African Descent. Yeah! yeah. yeah. IPAD was formed to commemorate the United Nations Resolution 6469, which proclaims the year 2011 the International Year for People of African Descent. Under Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it states the following. Everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and his, her family. All right. Including food, clothing, housing, and medical care, and the necessary social services, and the right to security in the event of unemployment, sickness, disability, widowhood or old age or any lack of livelihood in circumstances beyond his or her control. What the Chicago anti-eviction campaign did today was literally took the language of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and they practically applied it in an expression of self-determination. And we're saying that the land belongs to the right. people. the government and it certainly does not belong to the banks. All right. Yeah. And in this situation where the United States government has used the taxpayers' money to bail out the banks, the people of America ha have already paid it forward. All right. Therefore, this home belongs to Martha and all the people of Chicago and America. <laughs> my kids was homeless again because the building I moved in was in foreclosure so therefore me and my kids had to take another journey 
to be homeless again, to sleep in our cars, to go to uh, different units, different family members' house, run around, no place to go. We came up with a, con uh, a conclusion not to give up. Always fight, never sit down. Keep it moving, keep it working. So this is what happened when, when you keep it moving, you never sit down, this is what you accomplish. Stuff like this here. Um, I'm saying is never give up, never sit down, always keep trying, um, and never give up for the uh, for our future, for my kids. You know, they ain't got to worry about where they gonna sleep, or who gonna um, where they gonna go to wash up at. All right. Or you know, what they what next pair of shoes or socks right. gonna get cleaned at. Uh, uh, they ain't got to worry about that anymore. They ain't got to worry about anything because. I never gave up. I always kept trying. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 The skill for this process. Share with us some of the skills that you learned through this process. Um, I learned. Um, I learned how to drywall. I learned how to uh, do plumbing. Do plumbing, <laughs> piping, <laughs> um, paint, paint, script paint, repair paint. Re um, replace it, put it back up, take it back down, put the holes in the walls, rebuild them, towels on the floor, I learned how to peel them up, take them up, and put them back down. I'm working oh. All right. All right. My name is Matt Ginsburg Jaco. I'm a part of the anti eviction campaign, also part of STOP, Southside Together, organizing for power. Um, I think that today is a beautiful example of what we need to do in order to move this country and this world Thank forward. You, uh, we need to stop waiting on politicians and banks to fix things for us. We need to start fixing them ourselves. And while, as we fix them ourselves, demand the real solution, which is that we have human rights that are instituted in this country and around the world. Um, this is just something that makes basic common sense. I mean, you don't need to be an expert economist or a big time banker or a PhD to understand that we have homes without people and people without homes. And one plus one equals two. Um, we could either let the banks continue to profiteer off our communities and continue to ran run ransack and then continue to make our government and our taxpayers foot the bill while we have homeless people who are needing services, who are needing looking and trying to find jobs and can't find them in this tough economy. Or we can say, you know what, that logic doesn't make sense to us. It's time for a different kind of system. It's time for a system that puts people before profit, that puts people in homes, that puts people without homes in homes without people. Um, so I think it's just, you know, we as an organization stop uh, and the rest of the anti-eviction campaign really salute the courage that it takes for Martha and others who will follow in her footsteps to take this important step. Um, we're going to be behind her 100%. We have youth and other members that live right in the blocks right around here and we're going to institute a 24-hour emergency response so the minute they try to come and evict her, if they dare, we will have an eviction blockade here to help support her. Uh, it's very important that this case succeed, and it's going to succeed because of the determination of the people in the community to institute a human right to housing. All right, so my name is M. Adams, M. Doc, A D A M S. I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I've been in Madison, Wisconsin for nearly or close to 10 years. Um, I thought this action today was very powerful and is exactly what we need as a people. Um, and I thought, it, I thought it spoke to what's been happening for hundreds of years of displaced African people as well as other groups of people. And I think it's about time that we uh, continue the legacy of our ancestors and continue the movement. And so um, I do this, a similar kind of work back um, in Madison where I'm part of the Take Back the, Lat Take Back the Land Madison movement as well as I'm a part of the uh, national leadership of the Take Back the Land movement. And so we do similar work. We do uh, work out called housing liberation. So we say that we do the livings, um, which is, we use that title to honor the sit-ins that happened 50 years prior, but we identify empty or foreclosed buildings like this, so we move families into it. So I think it's absolutely what we need. It makes perfect sense. Um, it's kind of like, duh, you know what I mean? Like, why, why isn't everybody um, doing this? But it felt great to be a part of, a, of something like this in another place, as well as with people from all over the country um, who, who share that same sentiment. Okay. I mean, the foreclosure crisis has affected all communities, uh, everywhere from 
you know, South Chicago all the way to the north suburbs. It's, it's all over the place. So I'm, I'm working in my, in my community also where I live. So is it a lot of problems with, uh, with, with condos, with uh, foreclosures too? Because a lot of people tend to think that it's just an issue for, uh, for people that buy houses and different stuff like that. Is it also a problem yes, with condos? Yes, definitely. In my neighborhood, it's, it's a big problem. Condos, um, a lot of people invested in the condos. There's a lot of gentrification there, but then these condos, these new condos sit empty, right? Nobody's buying them. Nobody's living in them. Um, so that brings property values down anyways, but, and vandalism, and it, all, it all goes the same way. And another problem on, in Rogers Park is uh, the issue of renters, uh, affordable housing. There's a lot of uh, rental housing in Rogers Park, and a lot of these owners are also going under, underwater, losing these buildings, and then that, that ends up affecting a lot of the renters in the area. No doubt. Frank Syndico, I'm with the Northeastern Pennsylvania Organizing Center, uh, based in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, which is a small town uh, with rural communities surrounding it. And uh, yeah, we're happy to be here in Chicago with the uh, National Housing Rights Campaign, supporting the work of the anti-eviction campaign in Chicago. And, um, and it was an amazing event today, uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, first of all, being able to see communities act uh, around the uh, right to housing. Uh, not recognizing that the government isn't going to do anything about it, the banks aren't going to do anything about it. It's people coming together, unifying, sharing skills, and putting people back into housing. And it, it's inspiring, first of all, to see how the community came together. Um, and second of all, it's good to see it actually happen. You know, we've been thinking about something like this for a long time, how we might use it, um, because we're seeing the same things in our communities boarded up houses, people being displaced, uh, evictions from public housing. And to see it actually happen, to actually feel it happen, which was the biggest thing to me, to actually just get the energy from it, to see people come together, uh, is an amazing thing. And we learned a lot from it. So. I'd like to thank everybody for the donations, or whatever they gave. Or... My name is Henry Warfield. Everyone know me as Big Hand. Um, today really meant something very deep to me, being a public housing resident. Uh, this, this movement goes back to the, the mid-90s, when it's supposed to be a, a plan for transformation. And what happened was they lost focus of the people and set their own agenda. So for the people to actually take back the land that were once was theirs, this is a very important key. You have the community who's involved, who supports this. You have people like JR, myself, even the cameraman Bruce, who's very active in this process, <laughs> who educates and, and tells and teaches everyone about their basic human rights, their housing rights, we're very supportive of that. So you're not in this fight alone. We know eviction is a real strong, embarrassing word. Foreclosure is as well. It's okay to ask for help. When you ask for help and you help others, great things come right back to you. Like the young lady who we helped. She was educating, passing out flights to different neighborhoods, letting them know what was going on in this crisis, this housing crisis in the United States. And how does she get rewarded? She has the place now that she can call home.